Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to talk to you today about how Satan can destroy a Christian. Um, you know, we're going to be getting back to the Revelation studies eventually here. We've got a lot of stuff going on right now, and they take a lot of research and a lot of study, a lot of prayer. Um, but uh, I see things, and, and I see Christians going in certain ways, and I get a lot of contact with people, and and uh, it Lord really put this on my heart to preach this because I don't have anything like this on my channel here. So I need to need to do this sermon to warn you out there uh, how Satan will come after you. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 4 through 5 says here, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together with my spirit, or excuse me, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. In context, it's talking about a man that was fornicating with his father's wife. You read that in verse 1 there. Um, doesn't mean necessarily that it was his birth mother, it could have been a stepmother. But either way, it's very, very wicked. And they were basically putting up with it. And so, one of the ways is there through sex perversion. And you can get involved in sex perversion as a Bible-believing Christian. Um, you start getting away from the Bible, you start getting away from praying, you start getting away from witnessing, and, you know, start messing around on the internet, looking at things that you shouldn't look at, or television, or whatever else. Um... You can get messed up. But notice what happens there. Verse 5. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Satan can get control of your flesh and give you sickness and disease and all kinds of stuff. And ironically, if you're going out and fornicating and things, you get into the you know prostitution and stuff like that, you can get a lot of different sexually transmitted diseases that will destroy your flesh. Kind of interesting. But verse 5 says, goes on to say that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So you see, the devil can get permission to mess up your flesh. But he can't touch your spirit. If you're redeemed, you're going to go to heaven you know, when you die. Uh, that's just the way it is. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Next, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27 says here, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Um, there's a statement, there's a number of statements you're going to learn as a Christian. And when, when you learn things as a Christian, you'll learn them. You say, huh, what does it? When you hear something, you're later going to see it come into practice in your life. I'm sure you've already seen that if you've been saved for any length of time. You will hear something and you'll go, that's really, that's kind of profound. And later on, you're going to be like, that's exactly what I'm going through, <laughs> you know. That'll happen. Okay? What am I talking about? Um, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'll get back to it. But notice he says here, um, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. I don't want to just, okay, I got it back in my head. Um, here's the statement. Okay? You cannot waste your time serving the Lord. What are we talking about? Not as uncertainly. When you're running the race, you can't say, you know, I wonder if I'm going to get, you know, you're, you're running some marathon and stuff. You run along and you go, you know, I wonder if I'm going to get disqualified. What if there's some kind of a weird thing here? Or what if it's there's some politics involved and, and you know, somebody goes past me or whatever. Christian, when you are running the race that's set before you, when you're witnessing to people, when you're reading your Bible, when you're living for the Lord, there is no uncertainty about it. You know, you're not going to get up there and, and get to the judgment seat of Christ and the Lord's going to go, all right, it's time to judge you. Um, oh, where did I put the paper? Um, hey, uh, Michael, you know, the archangel, uh, uh, where, could you bring up the file on, um, what was your name again? The Lord knows, okay? 
you are not in an uncertain race here. Everything that you do serving the Lord is recorded by the Lord and you'll be rewarded one day. You cannot waste your time serving the Lord. I'll say it one more time. Christian, you cannot waste your time serving your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, what kind of promises do we have on earth like that? Do you ever get to the end of a day and you just get there and you're just like, I wasted my whole day. <laughs> you know, I just, I accomplished like nothing today. I mean, I had a whole bunch of stuff I needed to get done. I didn't get any of it done. You're just like going, oh Lord, I wasted a whole day of my life. I went to get online. I was going to research such and such, or I had to look this up and I had to answer this person's email. I never did answer their email and I did this and that and whatever else. There's a lot of uncertain things in this life, but serving Jesus Christ is not uncertain. <clears throat> so fight I, verse 26, not as one that beateth the air. When you're fighting against the devil, it's a real battle. You're not just sitting there going like this, you know, doing your hands and stuff and there's nobody there and whatever. Uh-uh. When you get into spiritual warfare issues, you're fighting real battle there. But notice verse 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That is a challenge. Okay? I will speak from experience. Um, there are times that your body says, Okay, be lazy. You've studied the Bible enough. Just, just kind of go and you know watch some entertainment videos or, or just kind of take some time off. You know, Yes, okay, you shouldn't eat that unhealthy junk food, but you earned it, you know. And you go, oh, not me, brother. I fight that stuff. I'm good at fighting these things. I, I stick with the Bible. I, I, I don't waste time on anything else. Do you take a break? <laughs> Here's where the challenge comes in. Because you can, you know, we're to do all things in moderation, so don't get lazy and eat junk food and stuff like that. And ruin your health. Wreck your health. See, like it's talking about there. But don't go the opposite direction. Work too hard. Again, I speak from experience. Uh, there has been many, many times when I have lost sleep. Um, many times when I have just, you know, literally almost ruined the sanity of my, my family. Because it's just, i got to get these videos done. i gotta, I got to get this stuff done. i got this research to do and whatever else. I mean, we're talking about going on vacation before long. Um, that'll be the first time since we've been here in the state of Maine. Um, you know, going on, well, it's over three years, going on four years. I mean, my wife and I, we got married. We're going to be coming up to our fifth year anniversary soon. And we went on our honeymoon, and the other vacation was nothing. <laughs> um, you say, oh boy, you're a real servant of the Lord. Well, you know what, brethren? Sometimes it's a little dumb to push that hard because you start to burn out. And by God's grace, you know, He's helped us to stay in the fight and things. But uh, there's times as a Christian, you got to do both things. Don't get lazy. Don't go to the junk food. But don't get so, you know, worked up about exercise and worked up about serving the Lord and everything else that you aren't smart enough to take some time off. I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ took time off. He didn't need to go fishing. With his disciples hey get you know let's get out in the boat cast off from land and he's like preaching to the people okay see you you know let's go out here and he goes down in the hold and he's down there sleeping well what a waste of time he could be out winning souls inviting people to church you know knocking on doors <laughs> you see what i'm saying okay that's a challenge and see, the devil can blindside you with this thing because you can get convicted about the junk food and you can get convicted about the extra or the uh, entertainment. But sometimes he can get you so involved in ministry and doing things for the Lord that you begin to fit, forsake rest and relaxation. See what I'm saying? Go next to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. Okay, here's another way that the devil can get you. 
uh, verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. I've talked about this text many times. But what's going on here? Occasionally, you are supposed to do a little self-examination test. And you're supposed to remember how Jesus died on the cross and doing these things in remembrance. It's not Eucharistic salvation or something like the Catholics teach. You don't have to go to some priest and do his little uh, transubstantiation Latin hocus pocus stuff to transform a cookie and wine into flesh and blood that you can somehow eat and drink, even though the Bible says not to drink the blood. You know, figure that one out. But what's going on here? Verse 27, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And now, here's the thing. You say, well, let's see, that's lost people. Lost people come in. They're not discerning the Lord's body. They're not understanding what Jesus did on the cross. It's not there for their salvation. But look at this. Verse 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, saved people, and many sleep. As a Christian, you can start to uh, get kind of worldly and start forgetting the great price that Jesus Christ paid for your sins. And what does that lead to? You mess around in sin. I mean, all these movements of this, uh, the new gospels that have come out, you know, in recent years of the easy believism where there's no repentance, um, you know, the, the thing of uh, no prayer, you don't have to pray, you just, just imagine in your mind that you've been saved and, and there you go, I'm saved. I took it, you know, from God and, and uh, I didn't have to ask for it. I mean, you know, real good manners there, you know. Just uh, salvation is there and you just come to go. God says, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't have to ask for it. I'll just take it. Take that salvation for myself. Okay? <laughs> you know, what's all this stuff about? All these movements, of these false gospels, it's all about one thing. They're trying to get away from that conviction of sin. The easy believism heretic says there, has, there doesn't have to be any repentance. You just say, we have all sinned, and sin is just a general thing. We, okay, all have sinned. All right, yeah, sure, okay, I've done something wrong, but I don't need to feel convicted over it. I don't need to feel like I need to change my life, you know, after salvation. Uh, just, you know, okay, we're all sinners, you know. See? They take a later attitude towards sin. The people that don't want to pray, they don't want to come before God and say, fall down on their knees and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh, oh sinner? Oh, wow. Well, you know, see? We're back to that again. So what happens is you have people and they say, and these in the text here, they're genuinely saved people. And as a Christian, you can get to that point where you are genuinely saved, but you are actually starting to forget how great a price God paid, you know, to pay for those sins of yours. And what can happen is you can actually get to a point where you start to fall back into those sins because you start to listen to false prophets that take a lighter attitude towards sin you know, and they kind of, you know, joke about things and stuff and, and uh, they laugh about, I was watching this thing on television last night and whatever, and you go, you know, I gave up television in the past, but, well, Pastor so-and-so, you know, he, he watched, like, maybe it's okay. Well, I gave this up and I gave that up, you know, years ago, Lord convicted me of that, but hey, they're doing it, so maybe it would be okay for me to do it. And pretty soon, you have just a flippant attitude towards the fact that Jesus had to die on the cross because of sinners. You know, communion is supposed to be a very solemn time. And, you know, I don't think you have to do it every week or anything, but, you know, we try to do it at least once a year, you know. And um, it's a time of self-examination. It's a time of reflection where you think about, wow, Jesus... He died for those sins of mine. And, oh, boy. What does it lead to? Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. 
Now, how can you uh, judge yourself if you don't, don't have a changed life? I mean, you get saved and the Lord starts to clean up your life, the process of sanctification. How does it come in there that you're judging yourself? See, when you judge yourself, it's because you're changing things in your life. And you look and you go, oh, you know, I, I still haven't given up on uh, whatever sin. <sighs> you know, I got to get that thing. And you think about Jesus dying on the cross and the, and, and the screams and the blood and the, just the, the pain that our Savior went through. And you go, I'm sorry, Lord. You see what I'm saying? But when you get these Christians, oh, come on, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, it's not a big deal. It's very, very serious. Verse 32, But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. The guy in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Chastened of the Lord. What was the chastening? Satan was allowed to destroy his flesh. Mm-hmm. I'm convinced um, that you can live a pretty good life as a Christian. Okay? Yes, you will suffer. That's always going to be there. You're going to have those aspects. But I've seen God's blessing. I've seen it in a great way. But it comes because you're judging your sins. You see? And you're doing things for the Lord. The Lord will bless you greatly when you're doing that. And again, you know, I didn't really cover this a whole lot, but if you look at verse 30, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, save people, and many sleep. When you get a Christian that does not discern the Lord's body, discern what he went through, and the kind of pain and suffering that our Lord had to pay on that cross, and you just go, eh, you know, okay, yeah, whatever, you know, we all have our opinions, you know, okay, I'm doing whatever. Whatever, you know, I don't have a conviction. My conscience doesn't bother me. When you do that, if you keep doing that sin, because remember, again, all sin is negative. So you get the Christian that smokes cigarettes and stuff and has a hard time with that. They get to the point where they're saying, ah, oh, well, you know, my conscience doesn't convict me. Well, guess what? You're going to get lung cancer. You're going to get emphysema. You're going to have other problems. The Christian that drinks alcohol, you know, it gets drunk occasionally or something like that. They still have some remnants of that old whatever. It's going to give you, you know, cirrhosis of the liver or some other disease. The Christian that overeats, especially the junk food now, you know, I mean, the junk food's filled with poison. It's almost as poisonous, you know, poisonous as cigarettes or alcohol or anything, you know. And a lot of the alcohol is synthetic, too. And not to mention the cigarettes and the issues there. But you see, all sin is negative. So when the Lord says, okay... Think about what I had to pay on the cross to pay for your sins, the purchase price of your salvation, the blood that He shed on the cross. There should be conviction there. When you know that you're doing something wrong, you say, hey, He paid for this thing. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you have a child that's, that's unruly and they go and they break something. You go, what are you doing? Hey, you know, I had to work hard for that. I paid for that. Why just break it? That doesn't make any sense. That's what God the Father thinks of a Christian that just goes haphazardly and just breaks things and does things, breaks his laws, you know. It doesn't seem to care. God might have to uh, punish you for that. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Here's another thing that the devil will get you with. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. 
What is your motivation for ministry, for serving the Lord? It better be charity, because if it's not charity, you're wasting your time. And I'll tell you right now, it is a major struggle for me, and I know for you out there too, if you're producing any videos of any kind, uh, the devil has hordes of people that he likes to send by to try and get you into arguments and try to get that pride welling up where you're just like, you're just wanting to smash them, you know, just, you know. And believe you me, I do suffer long with a lot of people, okay? And I don't mean that I'm suffering all the time. I'm saying I do allow them to write a lot of stupid comments and things like that. I mean, there's people, you know, some of you,